Hello, welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, comment, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We would love to hear your ratings of the movies and shows we review. Email us your audio file to recappingpodcast at gmail.com and we will play it during the show. Or DM us on Instagram and we will post and read it on air. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Hey, Ashley. Hey, girl. Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. I am so excited for this conversation. Recap Nation, y'all are not ready. (laughs) We had the opportunity to sit down with the founder of the David brand, publicist extraordinaire, David Robinson. Such a phenomenal conversation, Ashley. It was so many gems. Uh, I didn't know until we got into the conversation how far back you guys went. So I was definitely excited <laughs> that, you know, y'all were able to rekindle your friendship as well yeah. as he provided some great gems on the pod for everybody. Phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity. So hope you guys enjoy. Here it is. Hello, Ashley. How are you doing today? Good, good, girl. How are you? Girl, I am elated, okay, because we have a very special person for our in conversation, Mr. David Robinson of the David brand. (laughs) Hey, hey, hey. (laughs) What's up, David? Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. So one of our favorite ways of opening up this special conversation is to ask, Please walk us and our listeners through the highlights of your journey thus far from praise singing in Detroit, because we went to church together, okay, to becoming a celebrity publicist in ATL. So my degree is in advertising and public relations. So I got a Bachelor of Arts degree and I graduated in 2010 with that. And But of course, it was Grand Rapids, Michigan. So there's, there's nothing entertainment there. It's all yeah. corporate. So... Um, I learned corporate PR and I was working at a hospital and the PR department there. So um, that was cool. I had a great time. But then, you know, obviously I was like, well, I need a paycheck. And I was trying to apply to PR agencies and I didn't get any bites. So I started working at a marketing firm. So I started working in marketing and I did that, you know, from Chicago to to Houston and to Baltimore. And when I left that, I was like, okay, let's, where do I want to go? Where's the Whereas the region I've always wanted to live in, so I went to Atlanta. So Atlanta was the destination. ATL. But, um, Wait, yeah, so, ATL. so David, did you live in all those cities? You kind of brushed over it, but you said Chicago, I did. Baltimore. Yeah, like, I did. Those are some yep. jumps and leaps. Yeah. When I graduated from college, when I graduated from college, I graduated May 1st. It was a Saturday, 2010. Sunday, I packed up everything, moved to Chicago. And then that Monday, I first started my first day of work in Chicago at a marketing company called wow. Develop Incorporated. And so I started doing... I would say grassroots marketing. Uh, we did events, but kind of like we were standing. I mean, we can make it sound really, really jazzy and say, oh, we did, you know, special events that were curated for our clients to be able to reach the, car- the demographic where they were. That's a really nice way to say it. But in real life, we were we had like squeegees and we're like washing windshields and making sure they have chips and crackers <laughs> and windshields and fixing them on the side. That's what you gotta do. What you gotta do. The thing, right? (laughs) (laughs) That's what I did. So I started that. And um, so I was with that company for nine months. And of course, it was really teaching you about business, really, because they teach you a skill set. And as once you get good at the skill set, then they're like, okay, well, we'll bring you some interviews so you can see if there's other people that you can also teach the skill set to. And if you can teach the skill set to other people, now you have a business, right? So The person that hired me on, you know, she did well. I was there in Chicago for nine months. And so she opened an office in Houston. In Houston, I was there. We continued doing that. We were also doing promotions inside of Sam's Clubs and Costco selling. And I was great at selling everything from skincare to makeup to knives to popcorn, cheesecakes, um, (laughs) flat irons. And you have no hair. But get this, though. (laughs) So I don't have any hair, right? Like none. But there are times I was like the top flat iron sales 
in the country. Like, I love it. All the time. Wow. I love it. It was flat yes. iron. It was skincare. It was makeup. I would top the country. And I mean, there's there's hundreds of people across the country that were doing selling the same product. But, you know, I, I did it. So anyways, so then after I kind of built a team in Houston, then I was promoted. They asked me to open an office in Baltimore. So that's what led me to Baltimore. Ooh. So I was in Baltimore for a year and a half. Um, and I had I was overseeing about nine or 10 different shows, which were the different events um, there. And after a while, I was like, you know, this is cool, but my life's journey is not meant to stop in a grocery store. So I wanted to nothing against grocery stores, but that's just what I didn't want. That what, wasn't even part of your vision. <laughs> it wasn't part of my vision. It wasn't. So I uh, uh, eventually left that and decided I was like, what do I want to where have I always wanted to be? So I said Atlanta. So I moved to Atlanta. And um, I started doing some other type of sales. And eventually I remember um, a friend of mine asked me, hey, David, can you ask, can you come with me to this, to this premiere, this red car premiere, see if you can help me out. I really need some help. Sure. Lo and behold, it was the Think Like a Man 2 red carpet premiere in nice. Atlanta. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> and so he <laughs> asked me, he's like, okay, so I've got a bunch of people coming. Can you do me a favor? Can you walk Selena Johnson down and... What do you want me to do? Walk her down the red carpet. I don't know how to walk somebody down the red carpet. It's not, it's not hard. Just take them to one outlet. Let's go to another one. Let's go to another one. And I'm like, and this is Selena. And you know, Selena Johnson, that's girl. When it all, it, girl. When <laughs> yes. it all falls down. Yes. Um, Sang David. Oh, he's a singer. Know. He's a singer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that shirt so, singing. A little something, a little something, a little from the SGIC. Shout out to Straight Gate. Um, yes. <laughs> Our foundation, okay. Period. Who just he just turned Period. what? He turned eighty, Bishop. Yeah, I, yeah. It was yeah. a milestone. It was definitely a milestone. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Yes. So, um, I remember being on that red carpet, and I'm on a red carpet, and I'm with Selena Johnson, and I'm like, wow. But then Kevin Hart is two feet away from me. Mm-hmm. I stepped back, and I was like stepping right into Lala Anthony's space. Terrence <laughs> J is like right over there. And Gabrielle Union, I think, had just kind of walked in. And then there's like a sea of press. And I'm like, what is this? And how do I do more of it? Yes. <laughs> and, you know, who else was there? Tamika Foster. That was back when, you know, Usher was still, just broken up with Tamika. Mm-hmm. Um, R. Kelly was it's there. Big in Atlanta, like, though. Yeah. Nikki Wyatt was there. Mm-hmm. Like, it was some of everybody was there. And I was like, what is this? This is insane. So from that moment on is when I started volunteering. I would volunteer to do different events. And just from being at this one and this one, I was like, oh, y'all doing an event? Yeah, I can do it. I'll come help. I'll come help. And after I continued to volunteer, I was building my own network. My first client, so that was in 2000, I want to say 14 is the first time I went to and saw that premiere. And then it was 2015 is when I signed my first client, which was um, Andrea Kelly, who is R. Kelly's ex-wife that was on yes. Hollywood X. Yes. So she was my very first client. And, um, you know, she and I are still friends today. You know, she was she was my first intro, really kind of sing and just kind of test the waters. And I'll and I I'll be honest, I told her, I said, I'll be honest, I haven't had a client before in this industry. So we'll learn together. Yeah. And I'll let you know if something you let me know if something makes sense or not. I'll let you know if something makes sense and we'll just kind of figure it out together. And so from her, then I added a girl named Sharman Lee, who was in Girlfriends. And then I added um, T.C. Carson, Mm -hmm. who was in Living Single. Kyle. (laughs) I named my first dog after Kyle Barker. (laughs) Did you really? I did. did. (laughs) That is so funny. It's funny because I actually just talked to him a few minutes ago. Um, We're doing another interview for him today. He's actually became like, he's still a client, but he also became like one of my closest friends. So we talk all the time. Yeah. And the business continued to grow from there. And it was interesting just to piece together and see. And I honestly, my journey is just, I just ask a lot of questions. If I can offer any advice to anybody that's wanting to kind of duplicate the process. I think the biggest thing is never coming in as acting like, you know, everything when you don't. Ooh, that's good. It's okay. And, um, and unfortunately for someone that may be in dealing with imposter syndrome, which I, I at times deal with, Mm-hmm. Um, a feeling very um, unworthy of being in the space, just come in in a room and just ask questions. How can I be of assistance? How does this work? What is this? I remember somebody first said, you know, you want to put out the step and repeat. I said, what is the step and repeat? Um, and I was like, you know, the banner, David, the banner. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> yes. Thanks. <laughs> so it just, so I would say um, those were probably, that was that, that first intro was probably the biggest highlight um, to seeing what this world can be. And it really became the goal. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll definitely circle back to any more advice that you have, but that was a nugget for all you guys listening. Several gems. At the top. Several <laughs> gems from the first question. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, in a Bossip article you were highlighted in, congratulations, by Thank the way. You. Thank you. It mentioned that according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, Black men make up only 5.9% of the global PR industry. You talked about a little bit asking questions, getting your foot in the door, but how difficult really was it to fully break in and immerse yourself in this new world? And how did you handle any setbacks? So that's a very interesting question. So this is uh, my, my, my truth. You know, everybody's truth is different. So my authentic truth is sometimes you have to dress the part before you have the part. And honestly, Mm -hmm. I believe that the reason why a lot of public figures or just people in general, clients that I've worked with in general, trust me very early on is because I look like I knew what I was doing. I would go to these events in a suit. You know, I'm not I I would make sure I'm in dress pants or khakis, a polo and a blazer and some and some loafers. Didn't know what I was doing, but I look like. You were some literal dress for success yes. mantra, which you were already, but they didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> they didn't know. I, they didn't know that I knew about as much as a five year old did. <laughs> um, that was the Detroit in you too, because we stay fly. Period. <laughs> Better period. know it. Period. <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all have that. I'm gonna let y'all have it. <laughs> <laughs> now, where are you, Ashley? Uh, I'm from Dayton, Ohio, so it's another okay. D, just not the D, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Dressing but I'm in Orlando. Part. Sorry, I live in Orlando okay. now, but okay, originally perfect. from Dayton. Yes. Okay, perfect. Who was just who was just in Orlando? Oh, I just actually did a booking for a client in Orlando, New Year's Eve. That's what it was. Um, okay, very cool. I'll say that dressing the part really was, and I actually have I have clients that made mention of that and said, David, you know, I just like the way you present. I like the way that you present yourself, which also represents us. Exactly. Yes. That in itself means so much because anybody that's in a team with someone, they know that every celebrity knows that anyone that they handpick and chosen to be in their space, wherever they are, still represents them. Yeah. And they know that. So celebrities don't want to be caught up in bad drama. So they want, they hope that some that somebody that's carrying their name represents them well. There, and there are people that don't take the same approach as I do as far as dress for success. And, you know, they have their own measure, but I just have my own standard because, you know, I am my brand, which is part of the, the, the birthing of the name of the David brand. If there was an initial key is really just dressing the part and understand that representation matters in every sense of the word. Especially in the land of glitz and glamour, such as Hollywood, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, honestly, there's there's been so many times I've gone to events where I might be, you know, dressed up well and I'll have my phone and there's like a there's like a maybe a table that you're supposed to check in and, you know, get your name badge. And I'll just have my phone. I'm like, yes, no, because that's not right. You know, I'm going to, and I like walk right past the table and nobody stops me because they just (laughs) look like I know where I'm going. (laughs) I don't know where I'm going, (laughs) but long as I look like I do, more often than not, the people that are working at the table to check in are volunteers. So they're not, they're not being paid to get into a fight with somebody. So (laughs) if he looks like he's on the way to the path of where he's supposed to go, more power to him. So that, as also, so I would say overall, look at even before you, you know it. That. So to follow up, just again, were there any setbacks that you had, and how did you handle that? Most people have seen the success, but of course you don't post the failures. But um, I remember there was one time <laughs> I did a booking for Trina and Tawanda Braxton, and they were um, set to appear at a club, and we had already discussed the amount and all of that. But they, I think they were under the impression that they were having car service and the promoters hadn't necessarily, I don't think they had agreed to doing car service. I was like, oh, 
And they were like, well, where's, you know, and I had to just be honest. And we were, it was the, it was the day of, we had done an earlier day event and then they were going to, you know, change and then come back for the night event. And so I remember I had to have, I just had to go to them and, and first I'm like, so yeah, I didn't get the car service that I thought we were going to have. And uh, I'm sorry. So they were like, so who's going to get the car service? So we got to call our car service? They weren't happy. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is I'm sorry, but I will say there you was. You couldn't call the Uber people. Black though, like no, no, that's not. No, well, they live far, so the <laughs> thing is that far. they live far. So they live, speaking of in the D, they live the equivalent of like Rochester Hills to Ooh. downtown Detroit. Yeah, that's far. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so I thought you were about to quick. say you got it. You went and rented a car real quick. You drove all the way and you came back. Yeah, no, <laughs> with no, them no. in the car that's uh, what i thought you were saying no they actually no i didn't because the thing is you know they're going to make sure that they want to ride and i was you know at the end of the day i also realized they got more money than i do Indeed. so i'm not going to be the one pulling out of i mean i did mess it up honestly but i didn't even have it to fix it because i was still mm-hmm. earlier in my career mm-hmm. um but they had you know they talked about they were like david's fine mistakes happen no big deal you know and actually i remember one of their team members came to me like, David, no, is really honest. He was like, I remember once we were on somewhere with, with, he was like, I remember somewhere, we were somewhere out of town with Tony and I left Tony's cell phone in the Uber <sighs> when we got out. And you're speaking of Tony the Braxton. Miss Tony, 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 Tony the Braxton. Tony the Braxton. my heart, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said he left her cell phone in, in an Uber and they had got out and couldn't find it anywhere. And it was like, so David, trust me, you know, mistakes happen, life happens, no big deal. So that was something I was very, it was a, it was a very humbling moment of like, you know, cause I was really excited to be working with them and they were really hot and um, to have something like that. So it's always knowing that, you know, in spite of all success, you're still human. All of us are still human. Yeah. And you're you probably like had them. established such a great relationship and rapport with them already yeah. that yeah. when things like this happen, you know, yeah. there is understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were actually, I would say at that moment, we were new. I was newer working with them. I think I had only been working with them for like a few months. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, now I still work with Trina, even, you know, four or five years later. But uh, at that moment, it was earlier on in our relationship. And so, but, I, but they liked me. So they were very forgiving. And so we moved on and I just tried to be on top of everything ever since. Well, David. Could you expound on the skills and personality traits needed to be an excellent publicist like yourself? (laughs) Thank you. I would say organization, patience, Mm. yeah, mm, flexibility, and a poker face. Mm. Because you can't let them see you sweat Sweat. when you know everything is going to shit. (laughs) Exactly. 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 I did want to ask on top of your question that Delora just had about the traits and personalities. Now that you're mentioning the fact that, you know, it takes patience, it takes all these various things. Have you ever seen a depiction of a publicist like on a TV show or a movie that you thought closely aligned with your reality of what that day to day life is like? Oh my Because I feel like God. people ask that of yes. like lawyers and doctors, but like yes. as a publicist, have you seen something yes. like, yeah, that's Olivia accurate. Pope? I'm thinking Olivia Pope. Close, no? <laughs> Very close, yes. I, I would say Olivia Pope, yes. And then I saw another show that was even more, um, there's a show called Flack. Yes, on, on yes, and a pack one. That was your hidden gem. Okay. That is a great show, and I cannot wait until there's a new season. Ooh. Um, great show, and it really, but it really is that. Like, I mean, now granted, there's a, the lead character, she's kind of strung out. <laughs> uh kind of yeah she's yeah. a hot mess she's a hot it really mess is. it really is but like the way that you that she does it where sometimes you have to take the client's phone give me your phone no we're not doing this no we're not doing this we're gonna say this this is this we're gonna say it's that 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 and it it, it, it is that it's a lot of that actually so, so you should have been t- tristan thompson's publicist last week don't take that on david don't take that on <laughs> you don't need Listen. that smoke you don't need that fire Listen, let me tell you, I try, to, you know, I try to keep my publicity work to a minimum. It, I don't need the, the, the fires as much. Now, we're here for the fires 
And I have definitely <laughs> dealt with my share of fires, but I try to keep them minimal as much as possible. Mm. So, Amen. you know, and you be having to pray a lot at night dealing with listen, that mess. Listen, there are, <laughs> there, there are, there are some people that have wanted to work with me. Mm-mm-mm. I can refer you, but I ain't going to be able to want to do it because Ooh. you, <laughs> sir, ma'am, could be very uh, tumultuous. And I was interesting because I was my next question was going to be, are there any dream clients that you're hoping to work with? So to know that you really do vet and think this through, not just about the money, but is this relationship going to work? So are there any dream people out there that you think would be great to work with in the future? So I'll say I would like to really just shadow behind the scenes of of Yvette Noel Short. Yvette Noel Short is the publicist for Beyonce. Beyonce, yeah. And she, I would love to just shadow behind and see because one of the really cool things that I really noticed is the fact that Beyonce is in the press without being in the press. Mm. Now, At my question point is, in her career for sure. is it because of her hive or is it because of something her publicist has done? I think it's both. Ooh. So there are things genius, that's right. Genius. It is. That's why I love it. <laughs> I, that's why I love it. Because there are things that we do. Like I remember when I was working on the Corella campaign, but I remember talking to one of the um, writers at Bossip and saying, why don't we I, and I rem- what I did was I actually went online and I found a lot of black celebrities that have dressed as Corella in some type of moment, whether on stage or for Halloween or whatever. So what I did, I found like Nene Leakes, Cardi B, a bunch of people. I think uh, Toya Wright, um, or which, which is Toya Johnson, I guess now. Mm-hmm. Um, so many others. And I found a lot, Beyonce even, um, Kim Kardashian. And I made a whole list of a bunch of people. And I said, here are some of, and I sent it to one of the editors of Boston. I was like, why don't we just talk about some of our favorite celebrities that have done a tribute to Corella? And so I sent that to them. They love the idea and they created an article about it. So there is how we created press for Corella without needing any of the actors, without needing any of the cast, without needing any of the clips, but there's still press and discussion around Mm -hmm. the film. So like a a guerrilla campaign, is that, yeah, around that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's, because a lot of times when we do film PR, um, we we don't oftentimes have direct access to the cast, especially in AA media, which that's a whole nother conversation in itself. African American, exactly. That, yeah, yep. We don't, you know, a lot of times we don't. They don't give us the main cast to say, okay, you know, prime example, House of Gucci. You know, they're not going to say, okay, well, what press are you going to book for Lady Gaga or an Al Pacino? It's not like that. You mm-hmm. have to find creative ways to get black press talking about it even if they're not given the opportunity to actually interview the the talent so is that your niche african-american um publicity yes 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 because i just be honest you know i'm black and um (laughs) i mean i don't know any other way to be I don't know what other just way to a be. few, just a few, just a few years. No, I feel like I've I've had a little bit of experience there. And though I love you know my my white counterparts and my white peers and my white movies and film and, and celebs, my biggest interest is in black black entertainment. Mm. Um, so you know I don't really care to know all the influences and celebrities and sometimes in and uh, other demographics. I really love supporting us. I'm like Issa Rae, you know, I'm rooting for everybody black. There everybody go. black, there always and forever. So it was an intentional choice for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, you know, and that, which is the interesting thing, which is one of the reasons why I think I love Atlanta over LA. Yeah. Because LA yeah. has a different thing. You know, LA is a very different vibe. Um, LA is very, you know, it's, it's definitely the capital, but the vibe is just different. It's not recognizing black talent as much as I think we should. Right. Um, we were at the, I recently went to the premiere for the matrix and, you know, I'm with the legend, you know, I think she's a living legend, Terry J. Vaughn. Um, 
Yeah. And, you know, she and Steady. I are really good friends. Exactly. Exactly. She and I are good friends and I represented her for, for several years. And, you know, she and I went to that premiere together and, you know, we got some good press, but I think that it wasn't the overall experience that I think I would have liked to have seen for someone of her caliber. You know, she's got a million followers on Instagram. Like she's um, a director, a producer, um, and she's been on several projects. Like she's, she's paved the way for other people. She's paved the way for Tiffany Haddish, mm. just saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think people, I mean, I don't think there's any arguments about that because LaVita definitely has lived on in Tiffany Haddish, a lot of Tiffany Haddish characters in my, in my opinion. So I don't know. I just think that I love Atlanta because Atlanta does highlight black talent. We highlight black celebrities here. We highlight, you know, influences within our community and don't feel the need to necessarily have to have the exceptions on the other side, which is why I love things like the NAACP image awards and ABF yes. honors and you know, the trumpet awards and, you know, BET awards, all of those things, soul train awards, all those things honor us. Mm-hmm. And absolutely. Honor absolutely. Do you ever get starstruck? And if you do, how do you overcome it? So here's my thing. You know, I'm so glad you asked that question. I really am. Because so many people, like, like whenever I tell people what I do, and I'll say, you know, they'll be like, oh, well, they're quick to jump to the fact of like, oh, well, David, you know, I don't really get starstruck. You know, they're just people. And honestly, I enjoy being starstruck. Mm. I actually enjoy being starstruck. Like, why not be starstruck? Because if, if it, it, this being starstruck and seeing somebody that you really love and really admire um, becomes a motivator, at least for me. It's a motivator to be able to say, oh my gosh, I met such and such or I saw such and such. Mm-hmm. So people, I think, I think they think that it impresses me, but when they say to me, oh, David, I'm not starstruck. Well, we should be. I mean, if Beyonce walks past you, we should all be starstruck. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Celebrities are starstruck to be her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, Beyonce is, a, is the celebrity celebrity. The you know what I mean? Tier. She the really is. Tier. Her, me, Adele, like the, the yeah. celebrities go nuts to see them. Yeah. But I agree with you. I think it keeps you excited. Like it keeps yeah. you energized the same way as like people get excited about Disney or something that's just exactly. kind of that magical otherworldly. I can tell you, I was just in Miami and I saw the main actress. Not a lot of people know her from the one on Netflix. And I was excited. I was like, oh my God, that's Hannah. Oh, wow. Like everybody don't know Hannah, but I know Hannah. Yes. And she looked yes, just like yes, how she yes, looked on yes. the show. So, you know, it's, I let her be. I didn't bother her, but it's still just like the excitement cool. of seeing. Like I saw Deja last time I was in Chicago from this is us minding her business walk. I'm like, what's up, Deja? I love it. You I know, it's, it. I, I, I'm with you in the world of celebrity culture. Like, oh my goodness. The moment. It's just so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I've met, I've met two of my favorite people. Ashley and I always talk about this, but on my Mount Rushmore of Black women, I met two of them, okay. uh, Oprah and Michelle Obama. Oh, and I'm jealous. I want to meet both of them. Exactly. When I, when I met Oprah, I had enough uh, like awareness to have like a conversation with her just briefly. Granted, you know, time is money and she's a billionaire. So <laughs> but when I met uh, Michelle Obama, <laughs> literally this is me my Mm -hmm. mom and my sister took over and like me I'm the one right I'm the one to be like yeah of course I'll say hello and I'll do this any other I was so struck and she was so lovely like people always say do not meet your you know idols your Mm -hmm. idols Mm -hmm. she understands the assignment because Mm -hmm. she creates such a warm environment Mm -hmm. to to the fact that we gave her we gave her a hug we got our picture and i we literally went back to touch her hand and she let us like <laughs> i would have got you i would, I would have washed my hand <laughs> it'd be mold and everything just, just one more watch. time before we go but it, and i just say all that to say it's like that that was my first time truly truly being starstruck and yeah. i'm like no words i'm like yeah uh, uh. yeah 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 <laughs> Again, I, um, top tier. Delora is naming the top, top tier. I mean, because they are both <laughs> on the top of my list. They are exactly. both. Like, I think, you know, and I think we love Barack, but I think people love Michelle even more than, like, I think. Period. For sure. Period. Okay, David. Are we sure. love and honor Barack, but everybody, we go in for Michelle. Uh-huh. Yeah. I can't wait for that new movie to come out with Viola Davis. Um, oh, I yeah. I think when I met Fantasia, my hand was literally shaking. Like, I was like, hi, nice to meet you. 
And she was like, she's like, nice to meet you too. And so I was like, and she's like, I'm just, I'm like, I just love everything you do. I just love everything. I'm just here. Like, she's like, yeah, let's take it. Let's get in some good life. And my, the whole time I, I'm holding my phone, I'm like, hand is like this. And I just like, I'm sorry. And like, I think I had to take it a couple of times because my hand was shaking so much. What was her assistant? No, just like. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> like, take this picture. <laughs> but she was so sweet. She was so sweet. Um, you know, not every, not every celebrity experience has always been positive. I can but that. most of them have been really, really positive. Like, That's like um, Yolanda Adams is one of the <gasps> sweetest people ever. She's yes. so sweet. Like I, I wouldn't remember, have it any other way. I wouldn't yeah. have it any other way. She's one way. of my all-time favorites. You know, Period. she's like yes. one of the greatest to me. And I told, <laughs> it's funny because I told her, I said, I said, it's like, you don't understand. I said, it's you. Beyonce and Barbara Streisand, my favorite. She's like, oh, you're like my daughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so when we took, pic- I remember we took a picture. She's like, do you like, okay, now check it out. Do you like it? Do you want to, <gasps> let's look at it. Do you want to go from a different angle? You know what, y'all move up a little bit. We could try to see if we get a different angle. You like and so I met her, you know, we've talked, you know, so n- since that moment, I've ran into her maybe a few times since. She follows me on IG now, by the way, just saying. Ooh, um, love. Name drop. Love. It's Yolanda Adams. I'm just, and every time she like comments or something, I'm just like, ah! oh, and then I met, um, it was the African, it was the grand opening to the African American Museum. The Black In DC? That's what I like to call it. Yes. yes. And so we were there, TC and I were there. And when we were walking out, there was a short lady that was like, um, do you know which way to go? She had her heels in her hand. I was like, I don't know. She was like, excuse me, do you know which way I'm supposed to go to meet? I said, who are you? It's Angela Bassett. Uh, what? And I'm like. <laughs> Sinner, breathe. <laughs> I, I, and I want to be like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But clearly in that moment, she was just trying to figure out which way to go. Everything was done. Like it was, it was a bunch of such. I was, I was like, yeah, I don't know which way to go. I, I think it, I think it's that. She's like, okay, because they told me to meet somewhere, but I don't know. I said, yeah, I, I don't know either. But I really want to be like, girl, let me grab this picture. But of course, being around celebrities, I understand how frustrating it is. And honestly, people can get so aggressive with getting these pictures yeah. that it's it's a lot. Like it's it's a lot. It's really um I mean, overwhelming. They Treat them like they're not human. The autograph. Yeah. You remember autographs yep. used yep. to be the yep. thing, but yep. now it's the picture, you yep. know? Yep. I remember at Essence Fest, I was with uh Shirley Ralph, who's a really good friend of mine as well. And she's we, amazing. Have have you guys been to Essence Fest? That's have a not had an opportunity yet. You know, that's Dolores' birthday weekend that that usually is, or falls yeah. around Dolores' birthday. We're both July birthdays. We're both You're Leo, I'm a yeah. Cancer, but exactly. that's okay. Exactly. July. <laughs> yep, exactly. So Essence Fest has like, you know, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Black people just in the New Orleans area. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. And of course, this is pre-pandemic. Um, so when we were there, because she's Shirley Ralph and people know who she is, there were times that we really had to go incognito, like get a hat, try to do a mask and different things. Like I remember she had one of those fans and we would try to keep a fan of because we would try to move her. But people were so, Cheryl, 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 oh my gosh, Cheryl. And people would come up and be like, oh, can I? And it's funny because without even really having acknowledging conversation, people would just, oh, take a picture, oh, take a picture. I'm like, well, we're trying to, oh, can you take a picture? It wouldn't stop. And then, of course, I, I got to get a picture. And my son got to get a picture. My daughter want a picture of his own. Um, can you do this video message to my mama? But then now we want a group shot. Mm-hmm. And then, the, oh, this didn't turn out right. Can we do it this way? Can we do it from a different angle? Let me, let me actually take my... And you've got wow people in wow. line yeah. for that moment. And that, that celebrity is stuck unless they have handlers that are like, no, we've got yeah. to stop. She has things to do. Loving her on App Elementary, by the way. Right? Mm-hmm. So funny. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I texted her about it too. And I was like, I love it. When she said woman of God, I I fell out. Okay. Fell out. Did you know that she was part of the bookstore at Straight Gate? I know women <laughs> like her. Okay. She looked like she worked at the bookstore. Sure does. Down the street. <laughs> sure does. But Auntie Rhonda and them. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> all right, David. I know you've worked on major campaigns, as you mentioned. You've worked on uh, Disney's Corella, which Ashley and I recapped, and we were obsessed with that movie. By the way, so good. Me too. We just rewatched it again. Love it. So good. I've and- watched it at least like six, seven times. <laughs> the fashion, God. everything, everything, storyline, everything. Again, more recently worked on the Matrix Resurrection campaign. Um, how does that work differ from your celebrity client work? And do you have a preference between the two? So I'm, I'm so glad you asked that question. So um, here's the thing. Film PR is so demanding. I mean, it's mm. so demanding. I mean, it's, it's But you got to do a lot in like a short amount of time, yes, right? Yeah, a lot. And I mean, a lot. And so some of the things like what we have, when, what a lot looks like, for example, I never posted about it, but I also worked on the campaign for the movie Dune. And when I was doing Ooh. Dune, like I, there was a moment that they had 78 screenings across the country that we had to manage RSVPs for. 78. Mm. In wow. a matter of two weeks. And, you know, to, to, to RSV, RSVP press, RSVP influencers, RSVP the general layman. And, and each, each screening has a different audience. So sometimes there's a critic screening. Then there's a promo screening, then there's a press screening, then there's an influencer hosted screening. And there's so many different types and you have to manage all the logistics for all of that. So there's that type of thing. We also want to have like sometimes culture stories, which we did things like that. Sometimes there's activations where you'll see certain things where you may go to an event and say, oh, sponsored by The Matrix or sponsored by Dune or sponsored by Corella. Those are things that quite possibly a PR department has connected with them and sponsored that moment, then we want to make, but what's interested of the studio is to make sure that there's press coverage of the fact that they did it. So we have to make sure that, for example, if we're going to do an ex, do a partnership in an expo, we'll say, okay, well, hey, rolling out, will you cover this story at this expo? Or, hey, you know, um, EUR Web or um, Essence, will you cover this story that we're doing this thing? then follow up to make sure that they're there or give them the coverage. It's, it's a lot more demanding and everything is very time sensitive. But the benefit of it is because film has such a huge audience and a lot of engagement mm-hmm. is been able to, gar- I've been able to garner relationships with a lot of the top key holders of some of the top media outlets. So like knowing mm-hmm. editor Mario Obo in Ebony or knowing the chief entertainment editor at Essence, Brandy Victorian, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and so many, all these other people that when I was doing just certain personal PR, I may or may not get responses of, but they, but these outlets jump at film opportunities. They always mm-hmm. jump at them. So I get a lot more responses, a lot more engagements that has allowed me to build relationships that have worked to the advantage of my personal PR. But as far as the overall pressures and workload, I much prefer the personal, but the revenue and the relationships you build is definitely higher in um, film. Do you feel like you've had an aha, mama, I made it moment? And if so, what was it? Yes, yes. I've had several. One big one. I think one, a, a, a really big one that was a really, 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 really big high was at the Stellar Awards this year. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you listen to Gospel, Ashley. I do. I actually okay. went to the Stellar Awards a couple of years back. So. Oh, did you? Oh, mm-hmm. awesome. Okay, very yeah. cool. So I was at the Stellar Awards this year. One of my clients is the Clark Sisters, and they were honored. Legendary. With Legendary. Oh my God. That's Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> and fun fact, um, the uh, Ashley, Jackie Clark's daughter, Angel, and I and Delora went to high school together. Oh, wow. The connections yeah. run deep, deep. You remember Angel, Delora? I do. I mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. She, we were in charge of the gospel choir together. So it's funny because in high school, we were carpooling. So I knew Jackie Clark as Miss Chisholm first. We full circle. Yeah. To now represent the group was very full circle moment. You know, and we carpool. And I've been to her house several times. Anyways, but the full circle moment was at the Stellar Awards this year, was representing the Clark sisters, right? Which is already its own thing. And they, um, earlier when they were backstage, it was just the four sisters, Dorinda's daughter, Nikki, and me. And I remember Karen saying, it was either Karen, I think it was Karen. I was like, you know, David, you just do such a great job. 
And then Dorinda was like, yes, David, you do a great job with us. You, you, I love the way you handle us and the way you it. get things done. And Karen jumped in. She's like, absolutely. She's like, absolutely. I mean, you're smart, intelligent, handsome. <laughs> I mean, you are just, thank you for everything you do for us, for the Clark sisters. My mother would be so proud Yo. of everything. Yo. Mm. I said, and then Twinkie was, she was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I said, y'all got to stop because I'm not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah, then the car, there was the like, waterfall, no, baby, the waterfall that would exactly. have happened. <laughs> so that happened in earlier the day, in the day. Then I was walking back down the aisle way and I, and Yolanda Adams was walking this way. And I saw her, she saw me, we were both, hi, ah! she's like, hi. Ah! And we gave each other a big hug. And Love then um, we talked. She was like, oh, my God. She was like, I'm following TC and his recipes. And she was like, I got to get on the show. We, we talked about that. And then I walked a little bit further. And Donnie McClurkin <gasps> called me. He was like, oh, here he go. <gasps> and I was like, what? He was like, this is the guy. <laughs> and he chose some story. He's like, this guy that was at the beach, posted about him at the beach and blah, 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 blah. And then he goes and tells the Clark sisters that funny and then at the end of the reception there was other artists that were there um radio one assistant programming manager here in atlanta dwight stone so i mean he was like dude how does it feel knowing that everyone in this room wants to work with you wow he said, he said i've had several artists come up to me today asking me about you and wow. he said i've watched your journey and I've seen it, and I'm, and I'm so proud of you. And, and anybody that continues to ask me, I'm going to validate the work because I've seen you do it, and I'm so proud of you. So that moment, because I had actually had several people, it was like Jonathan Nelson, there's a few other people, and to, to see how the network has grown and how what was once just an idea mm-hmm. was able to has you know manifest into a space where a lot of people that I've listened to and looked up to for my entire life David, you, to be you on already a first listed, basis, you know, the people that are still in my rotation for gospel music, period. You know, and you know, like, and I managed Byron Cage, you know, I've been I know, I know. For five years. Yeah. <laughs> so fantastic. Oh, so it, that was an aha moment for me then for sure. I, was I mean, like, I feel it and it wasn't me. So I can only imagine <laughs> what the experience would have been like. I That's why I'm so silent. I'm like, you just letting this sink in. Like that must yeah. be so satisfying. Like there's such a satisfaction to seeing just the culmination of your hard work, your vision, just knowing that you in and of yourself are not, not just enough, but more than enough that, you know, you started from here, you've seen the growth, and now you have such demand and such admiration. Because there's a difference mm, between people mm, wanting to work with you just because mm, you're good at what you do versus actually liking you. Mm, that's the thing. Mm, that's so, that's good. Thank you for that. And I, and I, you know, I'll be honest, sometimes I get uncomfortable talking about it because it seems sometimes even surreal to me of like this name, that name, this name, and, and, you know, everybody is in a different space in life. So I try not to, because sometimes it could be a trigger and it depends on where a person is in their personal life. And I try not to like go in, but there's times of like moments that I'm just like, oh my God, this is, this is insane. You know, this is, this is insane. Um, and I was there with my assistant and like to have a whole assistant and to, and I didn't pay for the trip, of course, you know, it, it just, yeah. That's so nice Absolutely. of you, but enjoy the Absolutely. fruits of your labor, David. Absolutely. Enjoy. Thank you. And you need to tell these stories. That's why I'm so happy that you're here today to talk with us because people need to hear this. It's inspiring. Yeah. I mean, this that's how important. I always say it. it's inspiring. Oh, it is good, inspiring. Good, good. As a black man, do your thing in this world, sir. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that is what I I'm saying. Can't. And Thank we're claiming you. the D, but we are from Southfield, Michigan. Period. Okay? Exactly. So if exactly. You can go from Southfield to being PR icon of the year. I'm so proud of you. That here. that moment was a big moment. Actually, hang on. So I decided since it was sitting right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, it was a big moment because I was chosen. Um, because actually the Clark sisters won an image award last year. And I, you know, there was something I was on a project I've been working on from the beginning. They won an image award. And I also have a trophy of the image award, but that was not, I'm grateful for it, but that was their win. This one was my win. 
Yes. And it, 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 it meant a try. lot to me. It meant, it meant a lot. And it, and, it, and it spoke to my inner imposter syndrome too. To say, David, you're this, keep going. That's beautiful. That's 30. I hate, I hate the imposter syndrome for sure. Cause I, I suffer from it too. And it's like, the Lord didn't bring me this far just to turn me, turn me around. Period. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with you being a publicist behind the scenes, do you have any desire for the limelight? Like a reality TV? I know you were singer. So do you want to drop a few tracks under your name? I saw that. Con- I saw that question. So the, the interesting thing is not a lot of people know, um, but I'm actually in currently in that space right now of wanting to revisit some of those things. Um, I feel like I am, you know, like you're, you, you're right. You know about my singing background. You know about my music background. Um, I actually went to school, actually, as a vocal performance major when I went to oh, Grand wow. Yeah, okay. I went as a vocal performance major. Then I started doing a bunch of theory and I was like, no, if I'm gonna spend thousand dollars, it ain't gonna be about theory. So I switched my my major to advertising and public relations. But um because that's where the check is, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to be a music teacher. And I also know about if going to an opera company and all that is good, but it's great if you have a degree, but the degree is not what's gonna get you the job, is can you sing? Mm-hmm. Can you perform? So Grand Valley, you know unfortunately offered me the opportunity to continue to study privately in the music space. So, but then when I came to graduate from college, I'm like, I need to go to a job where I can get a check, you know? So I've done that. I've, I've made some accolades and I'm proud of the work that I've done, but I really do have a desire to do um, some in front of camera stuff. So we'll see. I'm thinking it may be um, back to the stage, um, maybe like some musical theater type of things. Um, I have thought about, even like a podcast, actually a couple of friends of mine mentioned wanting to do a podcast. I thought about, you know, just maybe a video blog or something. I don't know. Cause I think I'm also could be entertaining conversationally. Absolutely. 1000%. So, so, <laughs> maybe revisit. I'm a little biased. But, you know. <laughs> I love the revisit of dreams deferred, especially once you start reaching certain ages and you know, you've gone the route of, hey, this is what I thought I needed to do. Not mm-hmm. that obviously you don't love what you do in the industry, but there's other things that is that you thought of and wanted to get into. So why not do Absolutely. it all? Life Fun is short. Fact. Fun fact, Ava DuVernay was a publicist before she get, became a film director. And then did she not became pick a up film. her first. She sure did. She and did she not picked pick up it her up first camera into at her 30s. 35. Mm-hmm. 35. So it's never too late. There we go. This Lee Tyson started acting in her 30s and had a prolific career. Absolutely. Okay, so Absolutely. Yes. And I think, you know, I was actually um, having a conversation with someone because I thought about it. I'm like, you know, oftentimes actors, they then have they get to book and, they, you know, they want to work on their talent and then they get booked and then they hire a publicist. What if I'm my own publicist? I mean, because I have the relationships. Exactly. I have the relationships with EUR, with Rolling Out, with the great they, grape juice and essence and I have the I have the media relationships to be my own publicist so if I have a product I know how to get it into and I right hands of media right hands of talent you know there's there's a lot of great relations like Malik Yoba is a great really great friend of mine um and I'm like I have these relationships I think if I actually have a product I could really soar with it so that's where I am right now well, that's exciting. And we obviously wish you nothing but success in whatever you decide to venture into. Yeah. And we know you will be great. What goals do you have for your business in the future? Great question. Um, I am actually currently, I've been meeting with a business consultant and I'm looking at expansion. So I'm trying to figure out, he actually, I had a meeting with him yesterday and he made a really great point. He said, David, when you first started, you were in hustle mode, you were in hustle mode of being able to make the relationships to build and to, to, to get some type of a system. You built relations, you had clients, but now you want to move. We got to transition from hustle mode to really business owner in a sense of just overseeing. Yeah. That Mm -hmm. eagle's eye view of your future and your business. Exactly. Where I can hopefully oversee other publicists, oversee other things and oversee the strategies. Well, my mm-hmm. only job is just to build, continue to build relationships. 
So that's really my goal right now is to really, so as it is right now, you know, I'm the publicist and then of course I have my assistant and I've been teaching her a lot, but I want to get into a space where I can just really have a few, few publicists, a couple interns, a couple, whatever, and just really oversee. So that's my next goal. Okay. Sounds awesome. And then you already gave us some gems of advice sprinkled throughout, but any final advice you have for others hoping to follow along this path? Yes, I do. I think my biggest piece of advice that I'd like to carry with me, and I I always do, because I think that's actually was the key to one of the biggest keys to how I got to where I am, is understanding that networking is a giver's game. So when you meet someone, offer, how can I give to you? Not how can I take from you? Mm. Meaning, so if I'm, so if I'm meeting you and you're a film director, don't say, don't come to me and say, if you're like, oh, I've got this film that I want you to look at and see what you think of it. Wrong approach. Hey, film director. I'm also kind of up and coming working on my own films, but I'm sure that there's a lot of things you probably need some, you need anybody just to kind of scrub the toilets, sweep the bathrooms. I got you. You ain't got to pay me nothing. I'll just, I'll just come sweep, just do whatever you need to do. I'll be an assistant to help out whatever you need. Oh, I saw, and and then, and maximize on that. See how much you can give. If you know anything about about a talent and you happen to be in a space and you see that maybe, I don't know, they need styling. They need whatever. Hey, I saw your such and such and such. Let me offer you this. Let me offer you that. Because at the end of the day, they have something that you want. They're going to be who they are. If, if, if all my clients walked away now, the Clark sisters are still going to be the Clark sisters. TC is still going to be TC. So if I want to be a part of their journey, I need to figure out what I can bring to them. Same way, even if there's a, say, if you want to meet, if there was a person that was wanting to be a junior publicist or whatever, and like, oh, I want to be a publicist too. Or oh, I, I want you to look at my business at this. Or I want, if you really want me to do a favor, don't come to me asking me questions. Come to me offering something. How can I help you? What's That's good, David? What are you working on? Do, what do you need? Do you need a business coach? Do you need a financial advisor? Do you need what do you need? Tell me what you need. I'm just here. I don't want anything from you. I just want to give. And that's actually how I got um, Terry J. Vaughn as a client. I think it was a Black Women's Expo. And I had met one of the talent keepers. They were like, oh, I was like, oh, well, who do we want to get? So I told them my roster of people that I was working on at the time. And they were like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I'm good on that. And I was like, well, what about Terry J. Vaughn? And they were like, oh, we would love to have Terry J. Vaughn. Well, I didn't have any official contract, but I had a phone number that I had had in my phone for a couple of years and I had never used, but I just had it. So I was like, okay. I said, well, let me see. I don't know what she's busy, but let me see. So I called. I said, hey, Terry, I don't know if you remember me. I met you such and such and such. I was like, I don't know if you remember me. We met here, whatever. But there's a Black Women's Expo that's happening at the Georgia World Congress Center. They would love to have you. I know they offer. They would love to have you as a speaker here. The sponsors are this, 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 this. I'll make sure you have car service and I'll be here to make sure that you have everything you need. Is that something that you'd be interested in? She was like, mm, what is it? What is it? She's like, okay. And she tapped me to email her. She's like, okay, yeah, I'm down. So just, all right, perfect. Well, just tell me where you want like them to pick up. I'll make sure everything's taken care of. Then I go back and, yes, I have secured Terry J. Vaughn. And then I secured it. The event came. She did it. I made sure I was on my P's and Q's. Is anything? Do you need any water? Do you need something? Um, make sure that we have this, this, this. She's like, okay. And we'll walk you to the, she's like, this is awesome. She's like, no, Dave, I've been really thinking about getting another publicist. Let's, let's have a meeting. Let's, let's meet next week. I'd love to. Absolutely. And, you know, from there, the rest is history. So it's about that. giving. Yeah. yeah. I didn't ask her if she needed the publicist. I didn't ask her to hire me. I didn't ask her to look at what I do. I said, I simply found an opportunity that could possibly make sense for her and offered it to her and just built a great rapport. That's the key. And the That's more amazing. people can do that, the more people will find themselves excelling faster. I love that. And along with what you were talking about earlier, volunteering, building networks, asking questions like, oh, David, this has been amazing. Okay. Amazing. Like, amazing. I'm like, thank you so it's crazy much. Crazy how much time has gone past, Dora. Too much time. Okay. Well, thank, well, thank you, you so, so much, much for your time. Wow, 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 Ashley. 
It was so good. <laughs> it was. I feel like I feel like one of us always gets emotional on these conversations. And I was due. Um, just the black excellence and just in general, the dreams, him living out his dreams, his journey, everything, the wisdom. Thank you so much, David. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I'm just so so proud of him. Again, we come from a suburb outside the D, but we claim Detroit, of course. <laughs> and, you know, it's so important to tell your story, right? Because it is. It, it's you're able to inspire, you know, people around you, you know, Absolutely. so I'm that's so why I love glad. these in conversations. Absolutely. Absolutely. And hopefully we'll have many more coming you guys' way. But check out now that David's out, go back to the beginning, check out Teresa, check out Carla check out Miss Renika. Yes. And yes, let's yes. keep getting these interviews and Delora. Exciting stuff. All right, Ashley. Thank you so much. And thank you again, David. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.